Hey, hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. So I have been very busy this summer and I haven't had a lot of time to get some content and footage out for my channel. Um, yeah, let's get started. Here's what's been going on. I just recently purchased a Camaro. So let's take a look at it. All right, so here's what I got. I got a really good deal on this 1977 Camaro here. It is a Arizona car, so it looks rough, which obviously it is because it's old. It's 44 years old, but this car is, uh, like I said, it's Arizona, and there's not a ton of rust on it compared to any car here in Minnesota. So let's do a quick walk around here. Um, as you can see, there's some light surface rust on the trunk here, and some of the crappy spray paint that they put on is chipping off. Um, it looks like most of the back is intact. And then we go to the side here. Looks pretty good. There's no holes and no big rust on it. Um, we go to the roof here. And as you can see, there's some paint chipping and there's some light surface rust, but it is solid. So I should be able to get that down to the bare metal and then be able to prime it. Um, let's back up a little bit here. Here's the fenders. Body lines are good. It's got the mirrors on there. The trim around the windshield is all there. It looks good. Got some roofing shingles on there. Um, here's the front of the car. The windshield's not cracked. It comes with these god-awful ugly rims. Which I do not like at all. The tires seem to be in pretty good shape. They don't look to be dry rotted or anything. And let's check out the interior here. This is where it gets kind of kind of crazy in here. So here's the interior. A nasty wheel steering wheel. Um, here's the dash. It is cracked. Like I said, it was an Arizona car, so obviously there's going to be some imperfections, and it's just. It's seen a lot better days, so this will be replaced here. Um, when I got the car, this actually panel down here was off. But as you can see, there's a lot of stuff down here that was disconnected. The guy was replacing the steering column. I don't know why, but he was. So there's a lot of wires and stuff that weren't hooked up. Like this orange one, I have no clue what it goes to. I ordered a manual. So I'll get that out and figure that out. And then that's, this is missing. But if you look in here, the floor so far looks pretty good. Um, it's solid. I don't feel any holes in it or anything. So um, I'm going to be ripping this all out to check out the, the panel and everything and, and get that. Or not the panel, but the interior and see how rusted or not rusted it is and just kind of go from there. And there's the passenger side. Um, it looks pretty good. There's some more panels back there. The headliner is actually in really good shape. It is missing that sun visor. Not a big deal. I'll get a new one. And then the cover for the light. Not a big deal. But I'm really pleased at how this headliner is. It's actually really good. Especially for 44 years old. So I imagine at some point in time it's been replaced. And then here we go. It's back. Sneak peek, there's the air cleaner because it's off. Um, the motor, I couldn't get it started because it was not hooked up and there was no battery in it. And then let's check out the trunk because this is where the biggest issues with the car is, is here in the trunk. Oh, three keys, that must be a new trunk. One of these should work. Okay, so as you can see, here's the old steering column that the guy took off. Um, there is rust back here, and it's wet. Um, but it doesn't look like it's rusted all the way through. So that's like a plus. And then over here, there's a bunch of... You, you could, there's definitely evidence of moisture in here. Um, I don't know if it's leaking from the trunk lid, if the seals are bad, or if it's leaking from the windshield. 
Um, I'm gonna be taking all this out and just really inspecting it. But for the most part, I mean, there's rust on the camera and the it, but it's still solid. I mean, that's it's hard. Like it's it's good. It's not gonna be making a hole. So depending on after I get that blasted down and ground down to bare metal, I'll see how thick it is and then see if I have to replace the trunk pan. I do see one spot up here. It looks like maybe the shock came through. But that should be okay. Let me get this tire out of the way. I can't get it with both hands. Let's see if I get up in here. But as you can see, there's really not not a ton of rust in here. And I'm just I'm really pleased with it. And it looks pretty pretty good, especially for the age and, and for the car. Um, and then let's go ahead. Oh, I gotta turn this back. So it locks in. There we go. Now we gotta come back here. I wanna go underneath the car to the frame side and show you what that looks like under here. So we're gonna start in the back. <clears throat> and starting back here. It's cause yeah, there's really late surface rust, and I don't know if it's just because of my camera. It's making it look a lot worse than it actually is. It's really not bad because it's solid, it's not rusted through. Here's a gas tank, and then that's just kind of built up in debris. So all that comes off, so that's pretty solid. I'll be dropping the gas tank and getting new straps and everything. I'll come over to the shocks here. Shocks are really good. You got the rear axle. The rear axle is in really great shape as well. It's not super rusted, rusty. And then when we come over to the side here I don't have a lot of room in here it's not running and I can't get it into my back garage or I'll be working on it but I just want to kind of show you guys a little bit of everything um, when you look in the wheel wells they're not all rusted out for the most part they're in really good condition like, like up here it looks like rust but it's actually not it's paint which is weird the car used to be red bomb can black and then when we look under the, the doors you can tell they're they're solid they don't wiggle and they shut good the uh we get over here and as you can see the rocker panels are in really good shape they're not rusted out at all they actually still show a regular paint on them the doors are good like the seams where they rust out all the time there's a little bit of rust, but that should be able to be sandblasted and, and taken care of. Um, I'll take the door panels off and then check behind there and make sure everything's good. You can go back up in here. And the hinges aren't rusted out. Like, all this is just, it's solid. So this is really good. And then we come back down under the car. There you go, the rocker panels. They're all good. They're not rusted. I mean, the whole underside of this car is just... It's really good. It was an Arizona car, so I'm pretty super happy about that. I mean, I've looked at several different cars, and they're just usually all rusted out and rotted. So, and we'll come up here. I'll show you the engine compartment here. So, give me a sec here, and let me get the hood popped. On these Camaros, you gotta pull this here. It pops the hood. And then I think mine just gotta be adjusted because I can't get it. So, I gotta take a screwdriver and under there and it pushes hinge in and then she lifts right up so I got to use two hands for this so one sec okay so we got it up a little bit and let's open this up as you can see so right away here's what we see is we see the seal here it's all it's falling off so that's gonna have to be done and replaced not a big deal we'll start up here underneath this hood it's very very light rust like up here um, but other than that, it, it's freaking, it's nice. I'm pretty, I'm super stoked about this. I'm really stoked. Up here, that, it's all just dirty. It's not really super bad, but it just needs to be cleaned up and treated and painted. The firewall is good. There's no holes in it. The wheel wells are good. Even the battery tray here, 
I mean, it's it's rusty, because obviously it's a battery tray, they always rust, but it's it's not falling apart, which is crazy. When we come over here, air cleaner, it's missing, it's in the back seat of the car. Um, and then, yeah, so that's going to have to be put on eventually. But then we'll come over here and I'll show you down here. It's pretty, I don't know what that crap is, get rid of that. Um, down here, it, it's pretty good down here. The frame is good. It's not rusted up here. Brake booster's good. Distributor's good. The AC looks good. I checked the fluid in here already. It is full. The reservoir is empty, it appears, but that's fine. I'm going to be emptying that out anyway. I do have to check the oil, um, so I'll be doing that as well. But, yeah, it's just, it's pretty clean here. So I'm super, super excited about this. Now let's go underneath the front so you can look at this. We go under here. Radar support and cross members. These are all really good. They're not super rusted through. Just light surface rust, which is to be expected. We'll come down. Check out more of the frame. It's solid. It's not... It looks better than my truck, which is a 2015 here in Minnesota, so it's really good. Pretty, pretty happy about that. So, there we go. And then back there more. There is oil leakage. I see some oil on the ground. It hasn't ran, so I assume that's just, yeah, <laughs> it's an old motor. I'm sure it's, they're going to leak. So, the engine that's in here. It comes factory with a 305, a Chevy 305 in it. The guy said it's got a 350 in it, but until I actually get the engine block and look at it and read the numbers, I won't really be able to determine what it truly is. So I'll be doing that later. Um, I'll probably be dropping the motor that I built in my previous videos into here instead of this one. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So first thing I'm going to do here, guys, is get you on a tripod and get my camera here plugged in because it's going to die and then i'll start uh showing you my what i'm going to do to try to get her started so hang in there thanks guys no fires so that's a plus so I'm gonna actually jump in the car and see if I got any lights so. let's go check it out okay so I'm in the car let's open this up no lights no nothing it's kind of sketchy I have a feeling that nothing's gonna work We'll find out. Yeah, nothing at all. Um, I think I'm gonna have to tear the steering column apart. As you can see in here, or not see, he removed a bunch of stuff, and I think the link for. I think there's some linkages and stuff missing in here that he took off and yeah I'm gonna figure all that out here's some bolts and stuff because when he undid that steering column he didn't hook everything back up so let me jump under here I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna check out these wires um, down in here and see what's going on with them and see if I can figure this out as to why it's not turning over or anything. Um, if all else fails, I'll probably just jump the battery, jump the, yeah, jump the starter. So, uh, give me a minute. So I got that pan drop down. As you can see, this is all kind of a cluster. This is how it was when I got it. This is just dangling here. I put the couple screws in to hold it up. Um, I had an orange wire coming from Okay, that's coming from that light, so we know that that's nothing really important. Um, it's coming back around and then plugging into there. As far as the key, when I turn it, if you look, let me show you what's going on here. 
when I turn this key here, it goes all the way. There's like no resistance, and I'm thinking that. Okay, so there's some resistance on this key here, like I was saying, and I think is what he did on the steering column is something that broke because I could feel it wiggling in there, disconnected. I don't know. What is this? This is hanging down. There's just kind of stuff everywhere, so to me, in theory, it should start, but I should be getting dash and, and lights, but I'm not, so I gotta check these. I'm find the fuse box if I can and see if the fuse is blown somewhere in here. Which is way, way back up in here. Gosh, you just gotta love how, how nice and tight they make everything in here. Um, just by quick glance, there's one fuse that looks to be blown. No, it's not. So it looks like everything in here is pretty good so far. Um, I just have to figure it out from here. So I think it's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the key on. Oh, it's already on. Keep it on. And then I'm gonna try to jump the starter and see if I can get the sucker to at least turn over. So give me a minute here and let me get that set up. All right, everybody, so we did have a change in scenery here. I uh, worked on the car. I tried to jump it. I couldn't get any power to anything. So I thought maybe I'd try to jump the starter. It just wasn't starting. So we're going to be bench testing the starter now. So hang in there for a couple minutes. Let me get set up, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so some things that you're going to need here to bench test the bat or a starter here is the battery starter. Jumper cables and a push button start, which I got right here. It's got two leads on it, and all it is is acts like a switch. We need to push the button. The first thing we're gonna do is take the starter, we're gonna take the jumper cable. Positive, so positive. Yep. And on this motor, the actual case itself is going to be your ground. It's going to get a good ground. And the positive, it's going to go on this lug right here. And that's where your main power cable for your motor goes. Next, that's what you're going to do. Right here is where the power for the solenoid comes in, which jumps the motor. So I'm going to take this, put it on there, and take this side, and I'm going to put it on the battery, positive. Now in theory, I should be able to push this, and it'll turn. You can see that or hear it, but my starter works. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with the starter. So, with that being said, we know that the starter is probably good and that I'm most likely not getting a good ground or a good power source to the starter. So let me set up and I'm going to get the, the, the battery cables all cleaned up and then we'll, uh, yeah. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this and clean this off.
get these terminals here. Get these cleaned up as well. Okay, so this negative battery terminal here, it's... <clears throat> let, me, let me take it off. looking but if you look at this right here let me see if it focus the end of that there is actually it's looks like it's like broken off or it's definitely stripped so it's not getting into the battery so I'm wondering if that's my issue and my problem so is what I'm gonna be doing is uh, looking for a new cable to use instead of this one and then um, I gotta go to the store and when I come back I'll be putting it all on and seeing if she fires up so I went to get new battery cables and I was actually able to find these right here studs for battery cables and the way that you remove these is you're just going to pinch studs with a pair of vice grips the old stud there it is. and then you're just going to work it out like that. Then, what you're gonna do, and you're gonna take a new stud, and you're gonna just push it in. But, this, right here, I don't know if you see in there, it's seen better days, it's all corroded and nasty. So I'm gonna take my drill, and I'm gonna try to get that cleaned out. Okay, so now that we got that thing off, you're gonna take your new bolt, push it in, like that, and it just clips in. There you go. That's how you change the battery cable. As you can see with uh, this stud here, the old one, you'll see where it's broken off or something. So. When I put it in, it felt like it was stripping. I don't know. It's not focusing. But, <clears throat> there we go. It felt like it was stripping, but it's, it's because it wasn't long enough, and it wasn't going into the battery as far as it should. So, I'm going to snap this one in. They're sometimes hard to get in, but you just got to work it down to the rubber. I can't get this one right now, so, so what I'm going to do is just going to press it on the bench and see if I can get it to pop in. There it goes. Now she's in. We have a new battery cable. So, all right, let's go get it put on the car. Okay, I put the negative terminal on the battery just so it's ready to go. So, now we're just going to drop it down here. That's nice and tight. So now I'm going to be jumping under the car and uh, putting the starter back in. All right, everybody. I'm going to try to film this. I don't have that good of an angle. I don't know if you can see this or not. And I might be just talking to myself here. But these, these cables here, I need to clean them off. This is the, the starter solenoid one. The one that I used the test light to jump. So I'm gonna clean that off with some sandpaper. Then I'm gonna use get this one, which goes up to the alternator, which gives power to the alternator, and I believe it gives power to not power to the alternator, but it goes to the alternator, and I believe it goes to everything else. And maybe that's why I'm not getting power, is because these are just dirty as well. So I'm gonna do that.
Okay, so I don't know if you saw the video of me putting a starter in or not. It was, man, that sucks. I don't have a shop light, and I just used the best angle that I could because I had to use my phone camera. But I got everything, seems to be everything pretty much hooked up on this. Now, I'm just going to hook up this positive battery cable here. And I also hooked up my remote start switch here. I got this hooked up as well. So, once I get this going, I should be able to start spinning over here. So, just gotta tighten the battery cable here. Nothing happened. I didn't. Don't see any flames, so that's that's like a positive here. I'm gonna take you over here. I'm gonna take you with me, and then we're gonna open the door and see if we got juice. I, I honestly doubt that anything happened with that. I don't know if there's a blown fuse, or what's going on. I just got light down there. That's a plus. Let's see if anything happens. Absolutely not, but it's okay. Um. The light down there is a huge improvement. That's awesome. So we do know that we got power coming into the cab. So now I'm gonna come over here, get my tools out of the way. I'm gonna hook up this remote start switch button here to the positive of this battery cable here. make sure everything's out of the way. Nothing's gonna get burnt. Now I'm gonna hit the button, here it goes. Ooh, that's a good sound, that's a good noise. That's exciting. So, I guess the next thing I need to do is uh, put you up on the stand and I'm gonna start messing with it and I'll just record it, so give me a minute here. Okay, so I guess the first thing I need to do is check the uh, the levels of the oil and all that to make sure it's good. So I guess we're going to check and see if I got spark here. spark so probably gonna have to run a wire from here over to my distributor there and see if that does anything Got started. Oh my goodness. Woo, buddy. Okay, so. All right, so as you can tell, I turned the light off on this thing. It's hurting me. But as you can tell, I got it started. I had stopped. Um, yeah, it's just, it fired right up. Can't believe it. So, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna push this engine right here that I got in the way. I'm gonna get that out of the way. I'm gonna pop open my garage door. And then we're gonna go get in the car and we're gonna get it started and see how she runs. I don't wanna get gassed out. But um, yeah, so give me a few minutes to get all this stuff done and then we'll come back and start it back up. Okay, try this again.
be running good. This thing's got a cam in it, for sure. And let me take it back here. You hear it? I don't know if you hear that, but it's very lopy. Like it's got a cam in there. Um, ah, tack doesn't work. I don't have an oil gauge. I don't know if it's burning oil or not burning, but I don't know if it's got oil pressure. Power steering works good. Check the brakes. See if we got brakes. Oh yeah. Brakes seem to be working good. Uh, tap doesn't work. Nothing really works on it um, at all. I suppose that's just all some wiring issues. Let's see here. Come on, there we go. Temp, man, it's super hot. <laughs> I know it's not. Um, yeah, it seems to be doing good. I'm gonna try to put it in gear here. moves so that's good put it back in pop it and just drive yep she seems to move so it's pretty exciting um yeah I'm just gonna let it rest here for a little bit put it back in park go and then uh yeah, that's probably gonna be probably the end of my video here. Pretty stoked I got it running. Um, sucks I couldn't check the oil because I couldn't find the dipstick. Um, she doesn't seem to be clicking or clacking like it needs oil. Sounds like it's running on all eight. So pretty excited about that. But anyway, thanks for watching my video, guys. Uh, yeah, welcome to Minnesota. It's snowing out today. Uh, that's why I moved back here into my shop dash garage here but um yeah thanks for watching we will uh catch you next time where i'll probably start to rip apart the interior and do some other stuff so sit tight and we'll see you then all right everybody so is what i did to get this sucker running is um i i took a hot lead from the battery positive there and i ran over here to the distributor which gave me my spark and then what i did with that uh that push button spark start switch that I got this one here I had this going down to the solenoid on the starter and that's how it starts and then the alternator hot is just clamped on to the other side of this push button start here so when I disconnect that it kills it so that's kind of how I got it all hooked up and that's how I got it running right now temporarily um, I the electrical it's still you know, it, it's still going to be gone through and everything. I most likely will get a new harness for this thing. I, I don't know. I'm getting, I got the manual. I got it on order, so it should be here pretty soon. But that's how I got this sucker started. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like my channel, go ahead and follow along if you would, please. Uh, like and subscribe and share with your friends. That would be great. Thanks.